Okay, so now we're doing addition and subtraction of exponentials. This is on page 17 and 18, exercises 1H, and this is a, a, a problem set that gives students some issues, and you just have to be careful. But in a way, it's the same rules that you've always messed around with. Same addition subtraction rules for doing problems with exponentials or not, but the key is to correctly line up the decimals. That's a key, and it's an easy thing maybe to forget about. Remember this. If you added a nickel and a dollar, you'd never get six anything. Because you can't add a nickel and a dollar the same. Instead, you'd say 100 cents plus 5 cents makes 105 cents, or 1.00 dollars plus 0 0.05 dollars makes 1.05 dollars. Same deal here. So your procedure for doing addition subtraction of exponentials is to do the math and get the raw calculation done first. That'll be your check. Then you change either value that you get started with so that the exponentials are the same number and it can be either one. Just like we figured out the cents, 105 cents, or the dollars, 1.05 gave you the same value with the same sig figs and that's the key. And then three, four, five, and six, the same rules as before. You line up the decimals after you do the exponentials match. You draw the line next to the least carefully measured value. All the digits to the left of the line are significant. All to the right aren't. And then you round up the last sig fig. Alright, so let's do a couple of uh, practice problems. Here's the first one, 9.41 times 10 to the minus 34 plus 7.7 .7 times 10 to the minus 35. Your job first is to do the raw calculation. So let's punch that into the calculator, see what we get. 9.41 times 10 to the minus 34 plus 7.7 .7 times 10 to the minus 35 equals. All right, so raw calculation is 1.018 times 10 to the minus 33rd. That's what my calculator says. You cannot tell how many sig figs is going to be in your result because it's an addition subtraction. Instead, you have to line up the decimals. But the only way you can line up the decimals is if both numbers are written to 10 to the minus 35, or both numbers are written to 10 to the minus 34. And it doesn't really matter which one you do, you'll still get the right answer. Let's change this to 10 to the minus 35. Okay, so if you remember back when we were doing standard exponential form, we were like multiplying by 10 and dividing by 10 to make numbers bigger and smaller. We have to do the same thing here. A number between, or a number that's times 10 to the minus 34, is that bigger or smaller than a number times 10 to the minus 35? This is a key. You have to be able to figure this out. 10 to the minus 34th is bigger. So we're going to divide this part by 10. If we divide that part by 10, we have to multiply that part by 10 times 10. So 94.1 times 10 to the minus 35 is exactly the same value and same sig figs as 9.41 times 10 to the minus 34. If you're not sure about that, Type this number into your calculator, hit equals, and see if you get that one. If they match up, you've done that right. Once you've set that number to 10 to the minus 35 with the same value, now we can line up the decimal places. 7.7 .7 times 10 to the minus 35. The times 10 to the minus 35 falls to the bottom. And now we just do our math. 8, 1, oh, oh, and where do we draw the line here? Well, this number is known to the tenths place. This number is known to the tenths place. All of these numbers are significant. This is a number with four sig figs. The final answer 
is 101.8 times 10 to the minus 35 with four sig figs, even though this had three and that had two. You could also write this to standard exponential form if you wanted, making this number smaller by two. So you make this number bigger by two and 1.018 times 10 to the minus 33 is exactly the same value with the same number sig figs and it matches up here. If you do this part incorrectly your problem result here won't match up with the raw calculator and that's your best check to make sure you're doing the problem right. Okay? Best to do some practice problems. Let's do another one. 8.150 times 10 to the 13th minus 9 times 10 to the 14th. Well, we have to match up the exponentials first after getting the raw calculator value. And what we get? Well, let's do that one. 8.150 times 10 to the 13 minus 9 times 10 to the 14. That's equal to zero. minus 8.185 times 10 to the 14. Okay, well, let's see if we can get that. We can change this number times 10 to the 14th, or we can change this number to times 10 to the 13th, and it doesn't matter which one. Let's change this one times 10 to the 14th. You know that to get a number from 10 to the 13th to 10 to the 14th, we're going to multiply by 10 on this side, which means we have to divide by 10 on that side. So 0 0.8150 to 4 sig figs times 10 to the 14th is the same value as 8.150 times 10 to the 13th. We've already gone through this procedure before. All right, so now we can line up the decimal places. 9 times 10 to the 14th. The times 10 to the 14th falls down to the bottom. You do that math, you get negative 8.1850. And where are we drawing the line here? Well, this time we're drawing the line right there. Okay, and when we draw the line there, the final answer will only have one sig fig. So negative 8 times 10 to the 14 is your final answer. This time, looking at the number sig figs in your problem sort of tells you how many sig figs will be in your answer, but it was just a random lucky guess. You have to know how to do it. Okay, so how do you do pra practice for this? Exercise is 1G. This will help you with all of your exponential work and also with your addition subtraction rules. All right, so get ready for a couple of uh, sample problems here. There's two of them. 17 times 10 to the minus 8th minus 17 times 10 to the minus 9th. And then 0 0.921 times 10 to the 8th plus 4 times 10 to the 7th. Hit pause after you try that work and then come back and see if you got these answers. Pause. Okay, you're back. Those are the right answers. Make sure you have the right number of sig figs in your answer. One more example problem. There it is. 3.3 times 10 to the 12th, ignore that big blotch there, 3.3 times 10 to the 12th plus 4.11 times 10 to the 14th. What's the final answer? Hit pause. Okay, you've paused, you've done your work, you've gotten your calculator, you've seen the raw answer, you've gone back through, figured out the sig figs, and if you get 4.14 times 10 to the 14th, you are a superstar. All right, so practice these. You're going to see a bunch of them. 
including on your final exam in both Chem 110A and in Chem 110B. So be ready for this kind of problem. All right.